row where the Leafs will be at the United Center for the only time this season. The next meeting between these two teams is until December in Toronto. And many arenas around the NHL are celebrating Hockey Fights Cancer. And tonight, it's that night in Chicago. A young Jack O'Donoghue, a nine-year-old who is battling Burkitt Lymphoma will drop the puck in a nice gesture. The Leafs will send Dave Boland out to take the ceremonial face off. And of course, Jonathan Taves for the Hawks. Enjoy. He's been diagnosed with Burkitt's Lymphoma. Please welcome from Carroll Stream, Illinois, nine year old Jack O'Donoghue. Joining Jack at center ice to drop tonight's ceremonial puck. Please welcome Toronto Maple Leaf center Dave Boland and Chicago Blackhawks right winger Patrick Kane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise, kindly remove all hats for the singing of the Canadian National Anthem. Then please remain standing to honor U.S. Navy Systems Technician Chief Anthony Roberti, U.S. Army Vet World War II Staff Sergeant William P. Guttenkost, and Joint Organist Frank Pellico, and soloist Jim Cornelison for the singing of the Star Spangled Banner.
Harris never gets old, does it? Across Madison Street from the site of the old Chicago Stadium, the United Center was once a cavernous hockey wasteland, but now it's one of the places to see a hockey game in the NHL. Sold out today for the 233rd consecutive game. And tonight's contest features two of the league's oldest teams and two of the best traditional uniforms, the Leafs against the Blackhawks. After the series of unfortunate events that led to a bad goal and a loss to Carolina on Thursday, Jonathan Bernier is back to work as the starter tonight for Toronto. James Reimer is his backup. Corey Crawford should have been the Conn Smythe winner last June, but the consolation prize wasn't bad. $36 million contract extension, an invite to Team Canada's training camp, and a day with the Cup in Chateauguay, Quebec. Joel Quedville, the coach of the Blackhawks, is fond of matching almost as much as Randy Carlisle, and he gets the last change as you look at the officials. The law firm that will work this game of Saint Laurent, a Bear, Murchison, and Nowak. And Joel gets the last change here, so he'll start Jonathan Taves with Brandon Saad on the left wing and Marion Hosa on the right side. All new look lines for the Blackhawks tonight against Tyler Bozak, Bill Kessel, and James Van Riemsdyk back in the lineup after missing a couple of games with back spasms. The shutdown defensive pair for Chicago. Nick Jalmerson, number four, and Johnny Oduya, number 27. They'll play against this Bozak line in all likelihood all night long. Carl Gunnarsson and Dion Phillip on the defense for Toronto, and Gunnarsson has the puck. Watched by Marion Hossa. Hard around, and the Leafs get the puck out to center. Jalmerson almost gave it away to Tyler Bozak. Taves did give it away to James Van Riemsdyk, but Marion Hossa took it back, and he's good at that. Here's Taves on the right side, tried to cut in, and Carl Gunnarsson will have a busy night playing against Taves. Made a nice play there. Taves stays in and goes after the puck, but he's tripped up at the side of the net. He tripped over the net. From the blue line, there's Duncan Keith in his first shift. And Dave Bolin on the ice for the first time. And he just about watched the puck go into his own net. Bolin, number 63, was number 36 here. Cups in 2010 and 13 as a third line center for Chicago. And he's out here with Joffrey Lupel and Josh Levo on a forward line. There's Patrick Sharp. Hit hard by Cody Franson. Morgan Riley comes over to do the same thing, but the puck got in deep. Patrick Kane looking out front. There was a defenseman there. Now the puck comes to the blue line. There's a sharp angle shot from Sharp, and he hit the post. Duncan Keith out here with Mike Koska on defense. Michael Hanzus trying to get the puck behind the net. And Josh Lebo takes it from his defense to Cody Franson, gets the puck to center and deep for a change. You see how active the Blackhawks defense were there too. Duncan Keith through the middle and that opened up some open ice. And a quick shot hit the bar. There's Marcus Kruger in over the blue line, Chicago's third line on the ice. Kruger has Brian Bickle on his left wing. Andrew Shaw, the super pest number 65, taken to the boards. Kruger against Nazem Kadri. So with Mason Raymond to tie Bodie to the blue line. Chalmerson to the middle. He shoots and Bernier makes a nice save. His best early on and held on long enough for a faceoff. Then there's another example of the D coming up and making the play. Sharp looking the, up at the board trying to see this replay. Here's Chalmerson through a crowd. That was the last play. Earlier on, traffic in front. You can see Kane as Letty went through the middle. And a quick shot as Bernier went down quickly. Sharp had a little bit of daylight, but off the post and out. You're going to have to have active heads in the defensive zone for the Leafs wingers who have to keep an eye on the defense coming through. Especially this pair. Duncan Keith on the ice and his usual partner Brent Seabrook over on the right side. Here's Brandon Perry, number 37. And center wins the faceoff. Keith takes the slap shot that was blocked. A little chip and chase from Colton Orr who goes after Duncan Keith. Following Jane McClemmon. He has Orr in front. And the pass got by Orr and also got by David Broll. And the play is stopped and the first penalty of the game will go against Chicago's Brent Seabrook. Jim, you mentioned the fact that both these coaches with their matchups, they were comfortable with a fourth line match. And one thing Colton Orr might not play a lot, but he's very effective on this shift. Blocks the shot, gets in on the four check. A turnover by Keith, four goes to the net, and right in front there, Seabrook with the cross check to draw the game's first power play. Toronto's power play has been excellent. Second best in the league, nine for 31, five goals in the last four games, and they win the faceoff. Cody Franson, the Dion Phillips, goes to the point, man. Bozak in the middle of the ice, Kessel to Phillips, and he shot just wide with a high slap out of a rolling puck. 
Kessel to the blue line. Could have been stumbled, but he kept the puck in. Branson's got a heavy shot. Side of the net. Van Riemsdyk tried to finesse it in, and he's tried that a few times. Didn't go. He and Mason Raymond are perfecting that move at the side of the net. So three goals between the two of them on that play already this year. There's Van Riemsdyk to the blue line and put up on the other side. Cody Franson back into the middle. Fanuf looks towards the net, passes off. Kessel has a screen, takes the shot. Crawford made the save. Don't think he saw it, though, with Van Riemsdyk parked in front of the net. Good-looking power play. Franson takes the shot just wide of the net. Kessel to the blue line. Some quick puck movement. He gets the puck back. Double-teamed here. The Blackhawks haven't been able to change. They've been hemmed in their own zone. Duncan Keith couldn't clear the puck. Van Riemsdyk to the blue line. Fanuf will slide along the line in the middle. Van Riemsdyk takes the goaltender's eyes away. Kessel takes the shot. And that hit title Bozak, and it's a break for the Blackhawks. They finally get a change. Down to 40 seconds to go in the Seabrook penalty. New power play unit on the ice. Gardner almost left the puck behind. Now dumps it in, and Nazem Kadri goes after Nick Chalmers. Johnny Oduya there to knock the puck loose. Mason Raymond will hustle towards it. Nordstrom there checking him. The puck stays in, but it's on a Blackhawk stick. And it's hit all the way down the ice by Johnny Oduya. You can see how aggressive the penalty killing of the Blackhawks was there. They've had some trouble with it to start this season. And as aggressive as they are, Jim, there, if you make some quick passes, you can open up some ice and take advantage of it. As in Kadri has a look around as he gets to the puck. Raymond and Kadri battle and Chalmerson, and they get the puck. Kadri looks out front. There was nobody there. Then his pass hit escape. Penalty's over. Seabrook's back on. Leafs have the puck. Mason Raymond. And a pass from Kadri back to the blue line. Hit a leg. It bounces all the way down the ice. So five on five hockey. Almost five minutes in. Leafs are 0 for 1 on the power play. Josh Levo. Very good skater. Number 32. Now has his first NHL goal. One of 26 players have scored their first NHL goal so far this season. And another penalty coming up, and this time it'll be against Toronto. It's a hooking call. And I think it's Carl Gunnarsson who's going to get the penalty. No, maybe not. On the back check, it's Dave it's Bowler, Dave Bowler. Who's immediately going the old 36 from Chicago, now 63 in Toronto, and it's not where he's going to want to be in his old barn. Jonathan Taves coming in, little hook to the arm, and the call was made. Down between the benches tonight, Gary Galley, how's the view from there? <laughs> it's quick, I'll, I'll tell you that. You know, one of the things with the specialty teams with the Chicago Blackhawks, you were talking about them, they've got to be better on power play and penalty killing tonight. Well, they're on the power play here for the first time. Taves up front, Shaw is a distraction, he'll go to the front of the net. Duncan Keith is at the left point. Kane over on the right side of the ice, sharp at the point as well. Here's Kane with a shot. That's blocked before it got through. Carl Gunnarsson and Jay McClement trying to clear the puck and they don't get it out. Sharp with a nice pass. Keith with a nice shot, but it's just wide of the net. And Sharp can't hold the line over on the right side. You can see early on here, Bernier is going to be looking through some bodies. Been lots of action in the crease. Kane straight up the middle, trying to pass deflected. Sharp with a shot. Bernier made the save. Patrick Kane. Patrick Sharp, Shaw screening, Kane turns to the net, passes off, Taves out front, backdoor play didn't work, and Keith has to track down the puck. Sharp, quickly over to Kane, Taves, one-timer, didn't get all of it. Tried the one-timer and it fluttered just wide, Jonathan Taves again. Patrick Sharp gives him the puck back, Shaw screening, Keith with some room, he shoots and he just missed the net, might have gone off the stick of Jamin Clement. And finally, the Leafs get the puck out, and they'll scramble to the bench and make a change. Go, go. Just like the Leaf power play, lots of pressure by the Blackhawk power play early on, and now the play is stopped. James Too many men on the ice? No, James Van Riemsdyk drew a penalty on Sharp. Sharp trailing the play, and the two got at it. A little bit of bumping back and forth, and Sharp lost his cool and slashed him in the back of the legs. You can see the play on the board. Look at Van Riemsdyk trying to get his stick out, and there's the slash to the back that was called. A little bit of theatrics as well from JVR. As he's uh, he's going to go to the dressing room, maybe just to push it back on the bench. You know what? He's a big guy, and they've missed him a lot. He gets in front of the net. He blocks the vision of Crawford. He likes to pull that puck out, use his back as a screen to back himself back out. He puts it through his legs from time to time. And there's one looking at it right there on a nice track shot against the Edmonton Oilers. Four on four here for 40 seconds. A long shot by Paul Ranger drifted just wide of the net. 
Jake Gardner holds the puck in for a moment. Here's Seabrook up the boards for Brandon Saad, but the puck didn't get out. Now it might on the stick of Nick Letty. Great skating defenseman in the middle. Brandon Saad, too many leaps around. Leaps will go back on the power play in 20 seconds. Letty rink wide. Marion Hosa has some ice. He moves in on Ranger. Snapped the shot. Bernier made the save. And Hosa got the puck back. Ranger doesn't have a stick. That's all right. The Leafs have the puck. Joffrey Lupul. Nazem Kadri. Coming with him is Lupul. And Gardner who deflected that shot into the corner. Hosa back to the puck. Penalty to Boland is over. He's on the ice and Toronto has a power play of just over a minute in duration. And they're making some changes here to get set up. Bernier leaves the puck for Dion Funa. He turns away from Marcus Kruger. Great penalty killer last season. He was with Michael Frolik, but he's with Michael Hanzus now. Frolik's in Winnipeg. And up the boards, the puck is cleared by Johnny Oduya. Now, one thing clear early on here for the Leafs power play is you're going to have to support each other well, make those short passes, try to stop that pressure of the penalty killing by the Hawks. The power play looked pretty good in the first one, but he couldn't get any shots. They had only one shot in the game. Blackhawks were without David Moore, of course, and as well for a league. Those, those two guys were a big part of Chicago's penalty kill last they year. Get used to new guys with they bigger roles this year. Well, they got off to just a horrible start, too. 44% in their first three games. And now trying to dig their way out of that. 28th in the league right now. Cody Franson with his shooting. Not much time left in this power play. Phil Kessel had some open ice, couldn't control the puck. It was knocked off his stick. Sharps back on the ice, five on five again. Paul Ranger, a hard shot, covered, makes the save. And he scooped up the puck in front of the net before Van Riemsdyk could get a hold of it. Good early pace and lots of special teams action on Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Back in Hockey Night in Canada and a second opportunity at the United Center for the fans here to salute Dave Bowler. That's a classy salute, the second one in this building for Dave Boland. He was such a big part of the first cup, playing with Chris Versteeg and Andrew Ladd most of last season, a Stanley Cup year playing with Marcus Kruger and Michael Froelich, and he got the cup-winning goal. That's amazing, the two Stanley Cups. You think back to 2010 and the number of players that they had to jettison because of cap problems. This last year, he was really the biggest one from a cap standpoint. But this team's still very much intact, and now Always strange going back to your old barn, though, and playing against your former teammates. Well, they're cheering him now when he runs over yeah, somebody. That's going to change. Him, okay? <laughs> Give him a stick in the back of the leg. Shots in the game, 4-2 favoring the Blackhawks. Each team's had a power play. In fact, the Leafs have had two. Michael Hanzus, he's the second-line center now, and he's with Patrick Sharp and Kane as they move into the attacking zone, and there was that defenseman, Letty, trying to join the rush. They didn't get him the puck. Mike Koska, the former Leaf, is back. And there's some pressure here from Bozak. The Leafs change on the fly. Van Riemsdyk comes over the boards. Phil Kessel towards the net. Hanzus has the puck. Kane on his off wing goes wide and Cody Franson. Put the puck around on the boards for Hanzus. Out to Jalmerson and he missed it and now he's in a race and Van Riemsdyk's going to beat him to the puck. And he tried a little back pass for Kessel. Didn't work. Hanzus up the boards. One thing Michael won't do very often is win races, but he's a pretty crafty center. That's been a black hole for the Blackhawks, though. The second line center for years. And as you can see, forced to tinker with Kane and Taves, break them apart. Sharp was played center before, but they want him to be a winger and be stronger. But you're right. And he's filled the role of the playoffs, but he hasn't had a very good start. Just not a very fast skater and playing with two very fast guys in Kane and Sharp tonight. I was saying Van Riemsdyk had the chance there and you wonder with some back trouble that he's had, that was an early test to see how his speed was going. Got his legs going pretty good, didn't he? Yeah, not bad. 
Troy Bodie is the four checker here as Costco moves out for the Blackhawks. Marcus Kruger with the shoot in. Andrew Shaw runs into Paul Ranger along the boards. And Shaw wins that little battle. Gardner comes straight at him. Both defensemen after Andrew Shaw. And the puck comes to Mason Ray. Starting out with Bodie. And Nazem Kadri is after the puck, but it's poked away by Nick Letty. The Blackhawks trying to move back in. Bodie's knocked down. Tosca back for the puck. Joffrey Little trying to beat him to it. They battle on the boards, and back to the puck came Jonathan Taves. Nick Letty joins the rush, now leads it straight up the middle, and the play is just offside. This game awaits its first goal on CBC's Hockey. Bio on Patrick Kane and St. Louis Blues coach Ken Hitchcock, who has already seen Patrick Kane twice this year, had a great description this week on the Conn Smythe winner. He described him as stealth-like. He goes around for 60 minutes without anyone touching him, and he makes coaches nervous. The Leafs may want to take some tips from St. Louis, as in two games, the Blues have won twice versus the Hawks and kept Patrick Kane off the score sheet Thursday in a 3-2 shootout win. And also, Barrett Jackman actually got a good hit on Kane as well. Jim? Randy Carlisle made the first change here, put Bolin line, line on the ice, and Joel Quinville came right back and made the change to get Kane on the ice with Sharp, so the Leafs are changing on the fly here. Game needs something. It's been fairly lifeless at the start. Which is probably is good for Toronto more so than the home Chicago Blackhawks. Sometimes a little sleepy start on the road to you get your legs, get yourself into it. Josh Lebo stops up, couldn't pass into the middle of the ice. Seabrook came right at him. Lebo recovered, cycles into the corner, jumps to the blue line. Morgan Riley's shot went off a stick wide. Boland tried to set up Lupul, didn't work. Joffrey Lupul checked it, came to Sharp and out to set. He joins them, spins to get away from the check of Cody Franson. Toronto's changing on the fly, and Chicago's doing the same thing. On comes the Bozak line for Toronto. Up against Jonathan Taves, line for Chicago. There's a pass for Taves, went off the skate. Hoss is stopped by Bernier. Nick Jalmerson faked the slap shot. Tries to go by Franson, can't do it. Leon Phillip and Franson out together. The puck comes towards the blue line. Hoss is there. Drops it off of the line, Johnny Oduya. In for Brandon Saad. He'll try and cycle back, and does for Taves, who had a look around. Gets the puck shielded away from Bozak. In comes Jalmerson, centering pass just out of the reach of Saad. And Bill Kessel put the puck off the boards and out the center. Advantage Taves line on that shift. That's, that's, a, play stop. that's a good whistle to settle things down and get a change and offside. But one thing that the Chicago Blackhawks have done well is hit the middle of the ice, trying to spring a little area pass for Hosa, a little bit behind Jonathan Taves, but a good positional save by Bernier. Down, and you can see the support in front clearing the rebound away. They love the long range passes. They're one of the best teams in the National Hockey League at it. They like to send their forwards, blow the zone, and, and they could sting you quickly. Fourth line shift for both teams now. That's Paul Ranger with the puck behind the lead pick. Clement to sit. Holds an oar, will forecheck on Nick Letty. Didn't get the hit, but the Leafs got the puck. Now on the other side, Mike Koska. Clement comes at him, stopped him from clearing the puck. Into the middle of the ice, Brandon Bowling. And Brandon Peary. Can you see that slow start by Chicago? Just gets this building, which is so fired up that the national anthem is just deathly quiet. Corey Crawford left the puck there. The Blackhawks try and break up the giveaway. Both teams changing on the fly. In comes Mason Raymond. Got Bodie with him in front of the net. Raymond has a look around. Coming off the bench was Kadri, and he gets the puck to the end boards. They'll play the puck back to the blue line. Morgan Riley, Cody Francis, Morgan Riley to the side of the net, tipped by Mason Raymond. And that's up into the inning, and Raymond is going to argue that went off Koskin. North-South. Every coach wants their team to go north-south, and Chicago does this better than anybody. Look at them spread the ice out. Their forwards are at the far blue line. The puck is still below their goal line. And what they're doing is they're opening up seams in the ice and allowing their players to cut through them for speed. And this is, this is vintage Chicago. They did this last year in the playoffs versus Detroit. They had a huge success with it. 
they do it because they've got the players that can execute The mobile that. defense, too, and your D can alleviate that first checker and open up some ice. That makes them dangerous. Taves Bozak lines out against each other again. Julia and Chalmerson to play against the Bozak group. And the last time these lines matched up, it was advantage Taves. Let's see how this shift turns up. And Reemsdyke centering pass was taken away by Taves. And inside the center. Marion Hosa into the middle. Oduya's backhand shot inside again at the side of the net. Couldn't touch the puck. But there again, that's a defenseman joining the rush. Yeah, a lot of times you're thinking, okay, Seabrook or Keith maybe, but Oduya, not necessarily all offense, but he's right up on the play. Here's Hosa with a shot. Steered wide by Carl Gunnarsson. Hosak put the puck off the glass and out. And both teams start a change. It'll be interesting to watch Randy Carlisle, how long he'll stay with the matchups. I know Joel Quendrell obviously at the faceoff gets the change. So far, we haven't seen any mid-play changes. Andrew Shaw with a long shot off the wing, and Bernier makes the save, and he stops play. 6-2 with the shots for the Blackhawks. No score in the game on CBC. Jonathan Bernier has had the same summer goalie coach, Marco Marciano, since he was 12 years old. But this summer, they changed the routine a little bit. They worked more on reading shots, corner puck plays in front of the net. They worked more on traffic drills. They also worked more on leg strength and skating. Bernier admitted to me this week that he regained some motivation after the trade. In L.A., he knew he had no chance behind Jonathan Quick, and he now realizes that this is a great chance in the Leafs organization, and he wanted to get back to number one goalie shape. Jim? You know, he really hasn't played all that much because of where he's played. This is just his 59th National Hockey League start. Facing a pretty good team in a building where he's never had a win. He's 0-1 for his career against Chicago. Patrick Sharp has the puck for the Blackhawks. Passes off. Seabrook. Duncan Keith. He's down on the right wing. Seabrook with his shot and fluttered towards the net after it was partially blocked. Boland's trying to clear it. But Clement broke his stick blocking the shot. Sharp played the puck off Joffrey Lupel. Keith spun off the check. He's so good at that. Now he tries a pass that was blocked by Lupel. So he'll try the other side. And Brent Seabrook will move the puck out. Tipped in by Heinzus. And that'll start a change for both teams. No one won't for Chicago because that's icing. Chicago, nice cycle in the Toronto wet. They get the puck back to the blue line. Nice little play from Keith to Seabrook, and he unloads it right away, and good job by McClement to be right in the lane, severed the stick right in half, and look at the traffic and the screening and the depth of screening they've got in front of Jonathan Bernier. Pretty good look at it on our Hockey Night LASIK MD net can. Hansus has to stay on. He takes more of the defensive zone faceoffs than anybody else on the Blackhawks. He's the right guy to have on the ice after an icing call. Blackhawks get out. And Joel Quindle wants to start a change because he wants Taves line on here to match up against Bozak. And Joel Quindle just wants something oh. to happen. He looked mighty upset during that commercial break. Not a lot of smiling behind the Chicago bench. He doesn't do a lot of giggling no, behind he the bench anyway. But he, looked, he looks steamed tonight. Straight up the middle. Here comes Phil Kessel. James Van Riemsdyk tried to tuck the puck in as he moved from behind the net to the front of it. Hoso with a long pass. Taves up the middle. Can't find the puck in his feet. Bozak. The Jake Gardner. He's twice looking at the officials. He ended up on his backside. Wanted the call earlier in the neutral zone. and wanted one there, too. Turnover. Hosa up the middle. After the puck is Bickle. Ranger knocked the puck away from him. Ryan Bickle still looking for his first goal after that great playoff. His eight shots on goal, hasn't scored yet, and he's come off the first line because of it. Back up the middle on a leap turnover in the attacking blue line. Marcus Kruger hits the defense. Koska's shot. Bernier the save, and he's trying to find the puck. It fell onto the stick of Andrew Shaw. He's checked, and Mason Raymond will start out. Troy Bodie with him. Goes to the right wing and gets the puck. Kadri's there behind the net. And he takes over and tripped over a stick of Kruger. Lenny pushed the puck up the boards. Riley pinching. Couldn't hold the puck in. But he was backed up ably by Mason Raymond. Raymond has caught some people in the East by surprise with his great speed. But he's not fooling anybody in this building. The Hawks know him well from his days in Vancouver. Had 
Boundary gets open. Raymond had three hawks around him and lost the puck. Ryan Pickle with a long, hard shot wide of the net. Brandon Perry into the middle. Here's Nordstrom. Stops up, feeds the puck in front, and shot just wide. Another chance for Bickle. Joachim Nordstrom, young Swede drafted in 2010. Perry trying to get a hold of the puck, and he's hooked, and there'll be a Toronto penalty on the play. There's a couple of guys had their sticks in on Brandon Peary. Goaltenders up to the extra attacker on a delayed penalty against Toronto. And at least get hemmed into their zone. Nordstrom did a nice job behind the net of keeping the puck alive. You get tired, you stop moving your feet. And when you stop moving your feet, you're forced to use your stick. And that's exactly what happened with McClement. You can see reaching, reaching. Peary keeps it alive, and there's the stick right on the hand. A nice play defensively by Ranger. But as Gary was talking about, look at the springing pass for the Hawks. Always trying to catch someone up the middle. Nice recovery by Ranger. And here's what Taves was arguing about. He almost even stepped on the stick of Ranger. No call was made. Blackhawks on the power play again. 0 for 1. Kane to Taves. And the Leafs are without their best penalty killer. Gene McClements is the penalty box. And he averages almost five minutes a game in penalty killing time. So Dave Boland's out there. He's got James Van Riemsdyk with him, the two forwards. Five across, the Hawks get in over the blue line. Jonathan Taves around for Patrick Sharp. He's got Costa over on the other side. Kane out of the corner. Taves and Shaw in front. Costa shoots just wide. Back to the point again. Sharp on the other side. Mike Costa, big crowd. One-timer by Kane. Bernier to save. And a rebound is gobbled up by James Van Riemsdyk. He skates strongly to center, moves in with a shorthanded shot, and that was blocked by Patrick Sharp. Some good battles in front of the net there. Taves in on Dion Phaneuf with a couple of great saves by Bernier to keep this a scoreless game. Great focus with all the traffic. And the Leafs get the puck again, and they're able to clear it. Nazem Kadri getting some penalty killing time with Mason Raymond here. Ranger and Franson, the defensive pair. Out comes the smooth skating Nicoletti. Leads the attack. Passes in front of the net. Brandon Saad couldn't get a good shot away. He's had a few chances around the net tonight. Hands wanted a holding penalty there at Cadre. Letty shot and a nice save by Bernier. And this time he caught it with his glove and hangs on. Well, Bernier's been the busier of the two goaltenders. And on the power play, you know you're going to have bodies. Everyone collapsing to the net. This one just goes wide as Bernier coming out to challenge the shot. And now, look at a heads up play by Nick Letty. We got some trench play too here, right in front of the net. You got Fanuf battling away here. And the whole key is you don't want to get too tied up in front of the net. You want to keep yourself loose because you want to be able to clear loose pucks as well. Here's Marion Hosa with a shot that hit a leg in front of the net. Letty again. No Duncan Keith on this power play. Koska got the first ship. One net remaining in the period. One net. I don't know if he's got a problem other than the coach. Yeah, it could be. Letty straight up the middle. Carl Gunnarsson and Dion put up her back. And a bucket shot down the ice. And another good penalty kill. For the Toronto Maple Leafs. And without Jane McClement. Penalty's over, but Brandon Peary carries the bucket. Hosa to the blue line. Nobody there. The teammates were on a chain to get the matchup pair off. Gary talked about special teams. They came in 0 for 7 in their last two games and Joel Quenville won't be happy with the power plays here to start. One for their last 18 now. Bouncing puck. Jokum Nordstrom number 42. Got a deep drop for loophole to the blue line. Not out. Would do you with his shot. Just wide of the net as Kruger tried to tip it. Leafs had a couple of chances to get out of their own zone see if they have to pay for it. Sent down the ice by Joffrey Lupo and they'll pay with an icing call here. Well, Toronto won't be able to change and you know, Joel Quinville will get the tapes line on the ice. We'd like you to take your game to the next level with Hockey Night's second screen. Interact and compete for cash prizes at cbcsports.ca slash second screen. Jim, here's something you'll see a lot with the hybrid icing, how much time was put back on the clock. Only 0.6 of a second as they determined the play was at the dot, the whistle went. And added it on a little bit of time. So Taves' only hope here is to go straight ahead. And a 
second period comes to an end. Hawks won't like their game at all, and the Leafs will look at that as a pretty good road period, although they didn't put many pucks on Corey Crawford. The shots were nine for Chicago and three for the Maple Leafs. Coming up, it's Don Cherry and Ron McLean in the coach's corner. No score after the first period on Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Welcome back to Chicago and tomorrow night, Battle of the Blades. Six pairs left and it'll be at 8 o'clock local time. And the Leafs, not really an emotional first period between these two teams. And that's maybe not a surprise since they haven't met since February of 2012. But the Leafs did manage to out-hit the Hawks 16-8, to although those stats are always kind of a little wishy-washy. But Chicago beat them in the face-off circle 57% and also had a little bit more, more momentum build on their power play. Jim? I couldn't hear the whole speech, but I think Joel Quinville did a, a <laughs> battle of the battle of the blades promo in the in, intermission as well because his team was figure skating through the first period. He didn't like their game at all. Toronto really couldn't take advantage of it with just three shots on goal, just eight attempts. With Brandon side with Jonathan Taves and Marion Hosa against the Bozak line with Van Riemsdyk and Kessel. Hosa trying to track down the puck. I would guess that Randy Collar had a similar talk in his room, though, don't you think? Yeah, there's a couple of curmudgeons down behind the bench here tonight. Two old Leaf defensemen. Both played a lot in the league, and neither smiles a lot on the bench. Nick Chalmerson. You know, do you always get the assignment against the other team's top line? Taves. Muscled off the puck by Morgan Ryman. Kessel left the puck behind, and he left it for Kane. Sharps out front. Taves staying late in his ship. Plays the puck back to the blue line. Seabrook to Duncan Keith. His shot steered aside by Jonathan Bernier. Slapped up the boards by Cody Franson. Kessel, this time he gets the puck out through center and gets to the bench. Riley didn't get the change, though, and they're dead tired, this pair. Here comes Patrick Kane on Morgan Riley. Sharp shot blocked. Threw it towards the net. Bernier needs to stop the play, but he can't get the puck. Morgan Riley off the boards to center. Lupo didn't get the puck deep. Now it's finally deep enough for Morgan Riley and Cody Franzer to change. And here comes Patrick Kane. Trying to get by the defensive Ranger. Threw the puck blindly in front of the net. Gardner had it in his feet. He managed to move it away. Patrick Sharp lost a check. Duncan Keith on his offside. Kane centering pass. Loose puck. Sharp gets a hold of it, couldn't get a shot. And the Blackhawks have been a little better to start this second period with some pressure on Toronto. We saw another example of Patrick Kane in his hands. Through traffic, just puts the puck to an area to protect it and keeps his legs moving and falls right into it. They got, they got somebody attack him at some point. Giving him three quarters of the ice, not a good idea. There's Andrew Shaw with a wrist shot blocked by Jake Gardner. Marcus Kruger to Nick Letty. Mike Koska with a shot. That fluttered wide of the net. Bickle turns and fires, and that's stopped by Bernier. Kruger centering shot. Couldn't get a shot away. And the Leafs get a hold of the puck, and Mason Raymond starts out with Troy Bode. They get the center, dump the puck in. One four checker. That's Raymond and his line mates trying to change. Puck drifts by friends, and icing is waved off. Cody Branson watched by Brandon Bowling. Nice stretch pass. McClement couldn't get the puck from Colton Orr, and he was open going down the middle, too. The Leafs took a page out of the Blackhawks' book with the stretch pass, and it was a beauty. Puck's left behind. Jay McClement turns, takes the shot, deflected in behind the net. Colton Orr after the puck couldn't get it. Nordstrom up the boards to center. Here's Brandon Bowling with a shot that's blocked. Loose puck. Skated onto by Nordstrom, passes off to Brandon Peary. Duncan Keith fakes, takes, hit escape. And Jay McClemens starts out for Toronto. He's got Colton Orr with him. Trying to dump the puck in deep and change, but he didn't get it in. Brandon side into the middle of the ice. Peary's shot, and that's blocked before it got to the net. I'm sure Gary can hear Carlisle from there. <laughs> those bad dump-ins, they've been costly three times now, created offense and forced the Leafs not to be able to get the change. Both coaches a lot more vocal in this period. Marion Hosa. From the blue line, Jalmerson's pass, centered by Taves, off the skate in front of the net. 
From the blue line, here's Chalmers that takes his shot just wide of the net. Dave, Saad, and Hosa on the attacker. The Blackhawks can sense they've got the Leafs in a little bit of trouble here. And the puck is sent down the ice. And this, no icing. Close, but waved off. Scrambling to change Morgan Riley, flying through the air, trying to get onto the bench as the puck came by him. There's a little acrobatics right in front of you, Gary. I thought he was going to come into my area yeah. here. <laughs> it was well, a dump outside. He couldn't get off the ice. Well, game number seven for Morgan Riley goes up against Jonathan Taves. Does a good job of angling him out. You can see the chance for Sharp there. Boy, nice job coming back to Lebo. It hits his stick, and Bernier doesn't know where it is. And here's Patrick Kane. Look at how he just protects the puck to an area, keeps his leg going, and very calmly just sifts his way through. It looked exactly like the goal in Boston, where he carved his way up through the ice. As we look at Riley trying to find his way through the door, they haven't worked on that yet in practice. Sharp, Kane, Hanzus. All of the early part of this period has been played in the Toronto zone. No shots for Toronto. Kane, looking for the game's first goal, turned and left the man behind. I got the center. Phil Kessel one on one against Johnny Oduya. Outside takes the shot, missed the net. Pinching along the boards, Carl Gunnarsson holds the bucket for Toronto, but it's a hand pass, and that stops play. JVR back in the lineup tonight, and he had two of the three shots that the Toronto Maple Leafs got in the first period. That's all there was for them. Two of them almost identically off that one side of the net. Of course, trying to get in front of Crawford, but the Chicago Blackhawks are sleeping a little bit here, guys, and if the Toronto Maple Leafs don't take advantage of this, they're going to regret it because they're playing way too much on their end right now. Yeah, the Hawks alarm clock went off first, I think. I don't know much about analytics, but I know if you don't get any shots, you won't score, and the Leafs don't have one in this period. Interesting how both these coaches have seen their teams. I mean, good starts for both teams. The difference for the Leafs now, we mentioned off the opening, is you, know, you come out of a game that you should have won against Carolina. You had a 2-0 lead in the third. Had a chance to come into Chicago 7-1, and one, and instead, now you're in a position where you've got a chance of leaving this place 6-3. and three. Big difference in the early part of this season. Such an important game. But got to get playing. More end zone time. They just don't spend enough time in Chicago's end. It's just quick little entries and then Chicago exits. Like that. Like that. Andrew Shaw hits the trainer. Fickle shot. Knocked out by Brittany. Couldn't catch it. Loose puck. Big goal. contract off the first line but finally gets his first of the season well Jonathan Bernier thought he had it for a split second it's a shot that he should be able to control and you can see what happens when he doesn't lose his control tries for the poke check Joe Quenville puts all his offensive problems on the same line all three of these guys zeros across the board good perseverance for Fickle to have patience and get it by an outstretched Bernier Two games in a row where Jonathan Bernier's had an issue with the puck. The other one, of course, came from a lot farther, but that there, there's no doubt he should have had that in his glove. He's usually pretty tidy on that play and absorbs the shot, doesn't give up any rebounds. That's where a sleepy United center can come alive pretty quickly. You see the energy that one goal can bring. It's a big shift for Toronto. David Kroll with a shot off the leg and out of play, so Randy Carlisle goes with his fourth line trying to get some energy in the Leaf game. They haven't had a shot in six minutes of the second period. Now you can see a good box out. You know, a nice play by Crawford that starts the three on two, but the Leafs are back and in position. And you can just see the lo loss for the buck. Bozak can't get it. And Bickle didn't panic for a guy who all of a sudden hasn't had a goal in seven games. He showed a lot of patience and gets off the schneid. Toronto's got to get a four-check going. They've got to get in and four-check. Chicago win the record a little bit. They're coming out way too easy. 
Blackhawks got another draw and an easy exit from their defensive zone. Patrick Sharp to Patrick Kane. Backhander stopped by Bernier. And another rebound this time gobbled up in front of the net. Roy Bodie gets the center, took a hip check for Brent Seabrook, but got the puck deep. Mason Raymond to the blue line. Cody Franzen, too hot to handle for Morgan Riley. He's got to back up and he dumps the puck in. Seabrook to Keith. Watched by Nassim Kadri. His pass along the boards to Sharp, but the puck's taken away by Cody France. It could be a two-on-one here. Bodie gets himself loose. Penalty coming up against Chicago. Mason Raymond to the net, into some skates, and he knew the penalty would be called an interference penalty. And it'll be Duncan Keith that goes to the penalty box, and the Toronto Maple Leafs will go to the power play, looking for their first shot of the second period on Hockey Night in Canada. The shelf it up top, but a good save. Here's two characters that have been fairly quiet tonight, and this is this game needs. It needs a little banging going on, and maybe these two guys can get it going a bit. Fighting is down quite a bit from the same number of games last year, largely because the Leafs haven't been fighting lately. They started out with a bang, yeah, didn't they? Too busy winning. Montreal Canadiens have more scraps than the Leafs right now. So the Toronto power play 0 for 2 goes to work here. Cadre in over the blue line, he's turned back. Cadry, Raymond, and Lupo with Franson and Phillip to get it started. Cody Franson, rink wide. Nassim Cadry shoots intentionally wide. And he got a lucky break and got the rebound. And he gets a goal. Nassim Cadry from Joffrey Lupo. 1 1 game. I'm sure for Corey Crawford, he thought this one was going to be cleared out. And next thing you know, it's in the back of your net. Very opportunistic on the dump-in that looked like was going to be handled well. Under pressure, Kadri gets the dump-in. And right here, you've got a bouncing puck that Lupul's able to hold. And what a play by Kadri going to the net hard. Watch his reaction, how quickly he gets inside, sees the opportunity. Lupul with the neat move and off the post and in past Croft. Chicago has numbers there. They've got guys in front, two players right there, but no one picks up 43 coming right down the middle of the ice. Everybody thought Johnny Oduya's got that puck and it's come out and it just hopped over his stick. You saw the reaction by Crawford. He, he just didn't pick the puck up quick enough and get his leg against the post. Another power play goal for Toronto and a 1-1 tie on their first shot and only shot of the second period. As of Cadbury's third of the season at 7.03. Let's see what that goal does to the scheme. Josh Levo's in after the puck. Got Fanuf with him, and Joffrey Lupo the pass didn't get by Seabrook. Levo to the blue line. Beyond Fanuf. Bounces the puck back in. Bolin centering, tipped right on by Lupo, and a nice save there by Corey Crawford as Lupo and Keith got into it at the side of the net. Turnover at center ice, and just offside is Lupo as Bozak brought the puck in. Well, one thing you can see about Joffrey Lupo is his confidence is sky high. If he can stay healthy, he's going to be doing an awful lot of this. Right around the net, makes a nice deflection that almost finds its way past Crawford. And a good job on the goal. I mean, he forechecked. I know it's a power play, but he got on the puck quickly. He got the loose puck, and he took it right to the net. A good job by Kadri to find that open spot in the scene for him. But what a nice bang-bang play and a nice answer for Toronto. Getting down 1-0 in this building, they came right back and tied it up. And strong bottom hand by Kadri just overpowered the defender there. And Reemsdyke tipped the puck out to center. Kessel trying to steal the puck from Johnny Oduya. Nick Chalmerson, his pass just out of the reach of Bickle. And that goes for Ison. Murdoch teams up with the real Sherlock Holmes to investigate a nanny's disappearance on an all-new Murdoch mystery. That's Monday at 8 on CBC TV. And you can see Carlisle now going right back with Lupo, shuffling things up a bit. Bodie goes off the ice, and you love that as a player. When you get some offense going, you got lots of confidence, and your coach gives you a little bit of an extra bump. You got Kadri, Mason Raymond, and Joffrey Lupo together. Two good shifts in a row for Lupo, though, and he comes right back with it. Pickle gets the puck deep on the goaltender, Bernie. Shots are now 16-5 in favor of Chicago in a 1-1 tie. Nassim Kadri with a weak wide pass. Mason Raymond up the middle. Joffrey Lupo onto the puck, pushed off of it by Duncan Keith. And the Blackhawks quickly get out of their own zone to center. Sharp stops up. 
got away from Franzen. Seabrook has to kick the puck up. Sharp angled shot is knocked away by Bernier, cleared by Morgan Riley, but not out. Keith held the puck in. Seabrook couldn't find it in his feet. And as a Kadri gets to center, gets the puck deep on the second attempt, and Toronto changes on the fly. Keith watched by Josh Lebo. Patrick Keane dangles in over the line. Sharp with a shot. Bernier absorbs this one and stops play. You need your big players to be big for you. And of course, you look at Kadri who got that goal against Toronto back in this hockey game, but he's also playing physical as well. Setting the tone on the shift, comes in, finishes his check. You don't have to kill the guy, you just got to go right through him. And it's a good job by Kadri. And maybe some of his teammates will catch on and will start to play a little more physical game, which Toronto seems to play much better when they're playing that way. It's been way too quiet for him. They got lulled to sleep here by the Blackhawks, who really played a passive game so far tonight. Usually the anthem wakes you up. <laughs> yeah. They're going to have a do-over on this face-off. Got... Leafs got tangled up at the side of the net there. Well, Joffrey Lupo, you mentioned him staying healthy. He's had a pretty good body of work in the last season, 83 games. Well, what's amazing, too, is his goal scoring prowess. You, you go back to his last 21 regular season games, he's got 17 goals in that span. And you can just tell watching his face, he's got the confidence, he's got the hands, and life's been pretty good on the ice for him. There's Marion Hosa to the net, not very hard, easily cleared. What is interesting though, he always seems to be in that 17 to 19 minute range. Last game was the first game all year he's played 20 minutes. So even though he's been the hot hand, he doesn't necessarily get all that ice time that Bozak and Kessel and Dan Hoonsdijk. Straight up the middle, Jonathan Taves left the puck behind. He was poke checked in a good play by Carl Gunnarsson. And back comes Phil Kessel. He turned the puck over in the neutral zone. Taves takes a bump from Ranger and dumps it in. On a night where the top line is pretty quiet, the Leafs now have a pretty good one-two punch. And Lupo coming in a second wave. Really, one-two-three now, yeah. too. I mean, that, that's where Randy Carlisle, from a coaching standpoint, has a lot of different match options. Hasn't been afraid to go to the top line against the other team's top line because he's got a lot more food than the others. Here's Nick Letty. He's been a pretty good D-man tonight. And for Brandon Peary. Former Streetsville Darby got the puck to the blue line. There's a loose puck in front. And Bowling couldn't get a hold of it. Nick Letty again off the boards. Peary, shot, score! Special goal for Mike Koska, former Maple Leaf, his first as a Blackhawk 2-1 Chicago. Well, we've harped on it all night long that the defense, you have to have your head on a swivel. Understand where the pressure's coming from. Gunnarsson can't get the loose puck. The Leafs can't clear it. And look at how quickly the D jump up into the play. Good battle in front, and that one went off of Bernier. Bolick may be a bit of a problem in front. He doesn't get a piece of it. And Bernier lets that one slip underneath his arm. Too much time. I mean, the Blackhawks have so much time to get the puck, find the lanes, find the open person. It's way too much time in the offensive zone. You've got to take away the time and space a lot faster. Here they come again. Bickle off the wing. Tried to drag the puck into the middle. Couldn't quite get by Jake Carter. And the Maple Leafs are back the other way. David Bolin down the wing. Turns to get away from Seabrook. Shoots. Big rebound in front of the net. Josh Lebo couldn't come up with it, Brent Seabrook team. What a smart play by Bolin, though, getting that low shot to create the rebound. Almost paid off. Low far pad and rebound for Lebo, and now Toronto's changing on the fly. Still just two shots for Toronto in the period. Here comes Jonathan Taves. Stops up, wanted to pass. Lost the puck and got it back. Franzen chases it, centering pass. Tip. And the Leafs get a hold of it and manage to get the center. And the Leafs done. Big night for Van Riemsdyk, Bozak, and Kessel to play against the Taves line, but Taves has been better so far. Brandon Saad with another chance on this top line, and that was blocked by Dion Pudo. Poses it behind the net, Leafs get the puck. Van Riemsdyk to Kessel and up to center. Morgan Riley trying to join the rush, but it's broken up by Nick Jalberson. Well, stretching forwards, if the Leafs four checker gets caught, we've had too many odd man rushes going against. 
Hosa drifted a shot that went wide of the net. And Riemsdijk, the center end of the ship, dumps the puck in and changes. Troy Bodie trying to get in on a hard four check. Back to center, Patrick Kane. Up the middle comes Koska. Stays along the boards, nifty little pass to Michael Hanzus. He's checked by Mason Raymond. Branson up the boards and the Leafs get out of their own zone. Kadri rink wide. Bodie trying to drive wide. Nicoletti pinched him off. Koska in front of his own net. Hanzus had his head up and got that. Sharp couldn't break through the defense. Kadri told him to get it deep and he tries to do that. Second effort gets it in deep and Toronto changes again. Back off defensively, Kane comes back for the puck. Gets to center, bounces one in for Sharp, but got by him. Paul Ranger, first man back. Hard around on a Chicago change to Joffrey Luke. Shoveled up to center. Dave Bolin and Josh Levo dump the puck in it for a check. Duncan Keith. Two quick passes and out to center. Nordstrom trying to drive wide. Brandon Bolin. Welcome Nordstrom to the blue line, Duncan Keith, Brent Seabrook takes the shot, just as the traffic arrived and the shot went wide. Dave Boland spins around and deals the puck up the boards, in fact, he's iced it. And you'll see the battle going on with Bolig and Fanouf. End of a long shift, and Fanouf's dead tired. But he's going to get a little bit of a break. We wonder if Randy Carlisle is going to call a timeout or not. Well, he's not, he's not the guy you want to go off with in the first place. As we look at the front of the net and Dion's rough and tumble play in front, he's been pretty physical tonight with the number of the Hawks, and Bowling's one of those guys who's not going to take it. He's going to fight back. And finally, a little emotion. There haven't been many people talking to each other, have there, Gary? No, not even on these benches. <laughs> it's quiet down here. Eerily quiet. We I mean, usually you hear chatter and stuff along that nature, but nothing. Old benches. Dave Boland hasn't put his stamp on this game yet. He may still do that. Bickle centering pass and just missed in front by Marcus Kruger. And Reemsdyke advances the puck and the Leafs finish the change now after the exit call. Van Reemsdyke in deep, hard centering pass. Gardner's shot. That's blocked before it got to the net as the defenseman coming off the bench went straight up the middle and got the pass from Van Reemsdyke. Now Gardner's back in his own zone. Van Reemsdyke tried to chip, couldn't get it by Jalmers, and now he turns and skates with the puck. Drops it off, Bozak, centering pass for Phil Kessel, turns and shoots, Crawford the save, pokes the puck away. Andrew Shaw is back to get the puck. Oh, 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 Ranger going in through the middle there, driving to the net, that opened up that seam, but Kessel unable to grab that puck. Leaves are changing, Chalmerson with the pass to center. Marion Hosa off the bench. Into the middle of the ice, Jonathan Taves got the puck. Hosa's shot, stopped by Bergay. Hosa again, out of the corner. Up the boards, Koska's shot, Bergay the save. Loose puck on the rebound. Taves couldn't get it, neither could Brandon Saad. But they drew a penalty with the action in front of the net. And Dion for the protests. And he'll be called for a penalty in front of the net where he's battled all night and his team will be a man short and they're down a goal on Hockey Night in Canada. Full game here and he's Dion put up in the penalty box and this could be a critical, maybe pivotal point of the game. And you can just see the puck moving along. Taves goes to get it and it's just the holding of the stick there. Tired at the end right in front of the official and what an opportunity for the Chicago Blackhawks here to get a little separation. This is a big kill for the Leafs. Scramble draw, Teams got it back to Patrick Sharp. Kane turns off the boards, but he stumbled. And that allowed the puck out to center. Bozak on for the draw, hustles off. The Leafs haven't been able to win any faceoffs in their own zone tonight, and it's been a bit of a problem. Back in come the Blackhawks. Patrick Sharp, Kane shoots, Bernier to save, and there's no rebound for Shaw, who was right there and Taves on the doorstep as well. Well, you've heard that word stealth when you talk about Patrick Kane. Watch, as soon as Gunnarsson moves, he makes the pass, then beats him to the inside and didn't get the shot he wanted. Nice job of Bernier, though, holding on to the rebound. Bang on the right, he skated by here. He was talking to himself. He did not like the attempt whatsoever. Another Blackhawk face-off win. Andrew Shaw relays the puck around for Patrick Sharp at the right point. 
can't go to Keith, so he goes back in around the boards. Kane watched by Bosa. Shaw. Kane try to pass for Keith, taken away. And up come the Maple Leafs to center. Jay McClendon. Bozak drives the net, but just couldn't tip that hard pass. And Paul Ranger awaits the arrival of the puck at center. He turns to get away from Taves and dumps the puck back in as the penalty killers change up. Stretch pass to Andrew Shaw. Taves heading for the net. And Shaw was too late getting in the puck, but Jonathan Taves was wide open coming down the middle. You talk about frustrating, Gary. You see Taves, he knew he had the chance. It was a bad change by Franson that opened up some ice. You can see the dump in by Ranger there. Franson decides to go off. And look at Taves read that. He's got the inside track, but the puck just a little bit too late, a little too far ahead. It's been Chicago's problem the last little while. They have an inability to bury a team when they're getting the, the chances that they've been getting here in the second period. Up to 14 shots in the second period. Leafs have but four. And all the play has been in this end of the rink in the second period. Rope a dope. That's what it is. You're hanging on. I don't know how long you can keep hanging on. Blackhawks are getting a number of great eight chances. Nick Letty jumps up and gets a hold of the puck. Put it in behind the net. Gardner absorbs a hit through the puck in the corner. Marion Hosa is there. Seabrook on the other side to Nick Letty. Pass to Hosa. Quick shot up high. Knocked down before it got to Bernier. Quick Ranger knocked it down. A bouncing puck now. Brandon Saad as the Hawks go round the outside. Hosa mishandled the puck. Down to the last 30 seconds of the penalty to Dion Pudeau. Nicoletti. Brandon Saad to Brent Seabrook. Off the boards. Takes the sharp angled shot. Nothing doing against Bernier. Brandon Saad collects the puck. Turns back to the net. He's got a screen in front. Letty fake the shot. Won't take it. He passes off to Seabrook. Back to Nick Letty on the outside. Brandon Saad right in front. Score! Brandon Peary! Brandon Peary gets his second NHL goal. And the Blackhawks have a little breathing room at 3-1. to one. When you go to the tough areas of the ice, good things happen. Fury's got great positioning in front. He knows he's going to pay a price. Takes a cross-check from Ranger, but watch his reaction. Gets underneath, stick on the ice. He's prepared for that. And that's a tough move. Just backs into the seam as he gets that open ice. And the most important play, though, he's prepared to make it. Got his stick in the right spot. No chance at all for Bernier. And gets it up and over his pad. And now back at five on five, and the Leafs really have to get playing. They're down by two here. They've been outshot 24 to seven. And they've heard the Chelsea dagger three times. Brandon Peary has the Hawks out front by two. Welcome back to Chicago, and Brandon Peary gets his second goal in as many games. This is the one from Thursday night, a great one-timer on a pass from Marion Hosa. And that must have been a good feeling to get that first NHL goal in just his second game this season. And then here tonight, fighting off a battle in front, a power play goal. And he told me in the pre-warm-up, uh, pre, uh, guys, that uh, actually that he has huge confidence from that first goal in, against St. Louis. And you can see Patrick Sharp and all the leaders on the Chicago Blackhawks are really cheering him on. Got some power play time and gets his second NHL goal. Make it 3-1 for Chicago. Chicago really hasn't played extremely well, but they're ahead 3-1, to one, and they've outshot Toronto 25-7, to seven, and coincidental penalties being called here. Well, former teammates running at each other. Koska and Lupul. Yeah, he stood him up at the line. Lupul unable to get the puck through, and he just continued on. Lupul took offense to that shot, gives him a cross-check back, and Koska, they go back and forth, and the official finally said, let's go. Hasn't been much of that in this game at all. If you're the Toronto D, you got to be tired. They've spent so much time in their end and killing penalties and a lot of puck possession for the Blackhawks. They've got to get some end zone time in Chicago's end so they can get a little rest here. And tough the chance, too, for Dion Fidel and Carl Gunnarsson playing against Jonathan Taves all night. Taves is out there with Brandon Saad at four on four. Saad just hasn't finished tonight. There's another chance for him, and the puck got 
just ahead of him. Nestles on the ice with Tyler Bozak. He's been pretty quiet offensively tonight. From the blue line, required pass. Jalmerson from Oduya. Taves behind the net. Checked by Gunnarsson, who took the puck away. Long pass. Eventually got to Phil Kessel. But up falls in behind him. Kessel shoots! And then just skinned the edge of that post. Kessel again. Centering pass. Bozak can't get the puck. Dion put up, does, and his shot was blocked by Oduya. Puck hops up in the air. Oduya and Bozak battle. Jalmerson checks Kessel. Shot of the Taves. Too late in the shift, can't pull away, so he left the puck and heads for the bench. That's the most dangerous shift for Kessel there. He goes and smacks his stick on the bench. That was a goal scorer's shot. A quick release through traffic. And that one actually hit the knob of Crawford's stick. I wondered if it was the knob of the yeah. stick or the post, but it did. It was pretty close. Well, there are some guys who you just don't have to give much room to. And Kessel is one of them. He bides a little time in the middle, and you can see how quickly the release of the shot. Good read by Crawford, though, and he knocks it out with the knob. Brent Seabro. Andrew Shaw out here with Patrick Kane. Poland's on the ice here with Mason Raymond. Seabrook, pass right up the middle. Patrick Kane headed for the net. Stop by Bergay. Big save by Jonathan Bergay. That would have made it 4-1 to one with just over a minute left in the second period. Another example of Kane trying to disappear from the radar and then just dart into the open hole. And it was Gardner who got caught on the outside. Couldn't get there. There he comes again. Shaw. He shoots and another nice minute. save by Jonathan Bernier as we reach the last minute of the second period and released from captivity are Joffrey Lupel and Mike Koska is back to five on five. Taves is after the puck. Taves get a chance to break out with numbers here. Wing wide pass. Joffrey Lupel skated onto a bouncing puck, threw it at the net. Loose puck in front and Morgan Roddy was right there, couldn't bury him. Now he's trying to get back. Patrick Sharp. Jonathan Taves falls in behind him. Marion Hosa shoots! And Bernier makes another nice save. Well, the game gets a little bit of life and opens up. And the top players four on four. Watch Kane. This gets the burst of energy to jump into the seam. A nice recovery by Bernier to make the save. And then he gets a puck on the wall and he carries it into the zone. He attracts three lead players. And that means somebody's going to be open. And that was Duncan Keith. Bernier's been real good here the last couple of minutes, and that's Joffrey Lupo trying to corral a bouncing puck. Morgan Riley came close to his first NHL goal. Blackhawks win yet another draw in the attacking zone. Hosa, wrap around the tip, and he's stuck. Jalmerson, bouncing puck to the blue line, comes out, and Duncan oh, Keith swats it right back in. So tough with Bozak, the number one center. You play him in a defensive zone faceoff there. He's at 36% tonight in the faceoff circle. And he's under 50% in his own end for the season, and he's had to take most of those draws. So the second period comes to an end. The Blackhawks have a little bit of insurance. They're up 3-1. to one. Nazem Kadri with Cassie Campbell-Pascal when we come back on Hockey Night in Canada. Rick goes hot air ballooning in Alberta and climbs trees in Kingston, Ontario. All new Rick Mercer Report Tuesday at 8. And how about Dave Boland? On October 9th in Nashville, the Leafs were playing and Al McIsaac, the Vice President of Hockey Operations for the Chicago Blackhawks, presented him his Stanley Cup ring. It's worth about $12,000. And the Hawks also presented a beautiful pendant to the wives of the players. So David's wife, Julia, also got her little gift, and it's on their daughter, Lincoln Julia Boland. A nice picture there, Jim. Uh, Cassie, it's interesting to look around and during the summer and the, all the players get their day with the cup. And the biggest thing that I noticed about what the Blackhawks did with the cup this past summer is that they all had kids in it. In the first Stanley Cup, there were a whole bunch of young single guys, and just about, well, I don't know, all of them, but there was quite a few guys who had babies sitting in the Stanley Cup this summer. And all the guys in the prime of their careers and young families. 
And the Chicago team is up 3-1 to one as the third period begins. A dominant second period. Blackhawks woke up. Leafs didn't. The Blackhawks haven't been very good in third periods. In the last six games, they've been outscored 6 to nothing. Hard to imagine the Chicago team hasn't been able to score in the third period except in one game. There's Dave Bolin with a quick shot. And a nice save by Corey Crawford, who hasn't had a very busy night. Oh, he has. You look at Bowen and talk about how effective he is when he gets underneath the opponent's skin. And understandable, your first time you go, it wasn't that long ago you were celebrating with the guys on the other bench, but you haven't seen too many opportunities in this game where he's been edgy and he's been attacking like he does so effectively at other times. Randy Carlisle needs his opportunistic Leafs to show up here. They've been scoring a lot. Not tonight. This is the line that really needs to get going. Centered by Tyler Bozak. Dion put up on the other side. Carl Gunnarsson. Kessel can't get any open ice. For the bouncing puck. Slaps it in as he gets run at by Brandon Saad. Caves up the boards. Philip comes back at Saad who tipped the puck up. Gunnarsson is back, no icing on the play. That's the one thing the territorial game the Leafs haven't been able to establish. They had it in for a while, Jim, but no shots. Adry drifts one wide of the net. And the puck bounced out of play. There'll be a faceoff at center ice. Well, the shots are 29 to 10 in favor of the Chicago Blackhawks, and that's got to change in this third period if they're going to get themselves back in this game. And you look at the shot chart, where the shots are coming from, you've got three or four right around the net, most of them from the outer perimeter, and you're not going to beat Corey Crawford from there. So they've got to find a way. And, and the last shift, guys, that was the most extended time that I think they've been in the Blackhawks in some time. So they've got to change that in this period. Get an early goal, get some life, still got a chance. Mike Koska became the 27th NHL player to get his first goal as a shot just wide. Mike didn't get one last year in 35 games for Toronto. Takes a quick shot. Bernier steered that to the corner. Marcus Putin. Ryan Bickle. And the Blackhawks are back to holding the puck. Nick Letty with his shot. Big rebound. Score! Jokub Nordstrom put the puck in the net, but it's waved off immediately. Nichols getting a penalty for interference, I believe. I think you're right. So no goal and a penalty. Well, it wasn't Big quite, opportunity. It wasn't quite sweet Georgia Brown, but it was one that, once again, the Chicago Blackhawks having their way with the puck. And you saw the little contact there going to the front of the net as the puck came in. Watch the right of your screen. Bickles battling hard with Gardner and gets the shoulder of Bernier, and that's a good call. The goalie has to be able to make a save. If you impede his progress to make a save, it's the right call. Yeah, look, that's exactly it. You look, bumped him. Look where Bernier is. Well inside his blue paint, too. So it wasn't like he was out the top of the crease. That's an excellent call. Wow, what a big opportunity for Toronto. Instead of being down 4-1, to one, they're on a power play at 3-1. to one. They have a power play goal, and they want the draw. Dion Buda, quick shot by Mason Raymond, and he's stopped by Corey Crawford. Well, that's a big save by Crawford, too. He hasn't been that busy in the game, and at times maybe you lose some of your sharpness. Watch him follow this puck across, but most importantly, absorb it into his body. You can see the deep defense left loophole all by himself. That might have been in the back of the net had there been one. Scramble draw with Kadri involved in it. The puck goes right to the net. And the Blackhawks trying to clear it, they can't. Can't be it. Dion for the shoots just wide of the net. After the puck is Cody Franz and can't get it. Marcus Kruger cleared the puck down the ice. Kadri, Raymond, and Lupo stay up front of this power play. Dion Fuda lugs the puck. Mason Raymond chips it in. Chalmerson back to Jonathan Taves. Checked by Mason Raymond. Put up to Franzen. Can't load up and take the big shot. Nazim Kadri has a look around and finds Fanuf. No screen in front of the net right now. Kadri. Franson came in. Kadri goes to the net now. Raymond back to Fanuf. Now he's got a screen. The Cody Franson on his offside. Plays the puck down low. Lupo missed it and has to go fetch the puck. And he's muscled off it. Chalmerson gets it and clears it. You can hear Leaf fans in their living room yelling shoot another chance where the d just stayed in that box kept everything to the outside 
not only no traffic in front, no chance to even get it there. Bill Kessel on the second power play unit. Morgan Riley is out there, jumped up to get the puck. In deep for Kessel. He's got Bozak back to the front of the net. Ben Riemsdyk had to go and get a new stick. And so that even things up, and Kruger's able to clear the puck. And Ragged kills some time. Good job by Marcus Kruger. Now Crawford out to play the puck against the onrushing James Van Riemsdyk. Morgan Riley, a return pass from Bozak. Riley stays up on the play. Van Riemsdyk couldn't get it in the puck, and now it's cleared, and there's a foot race. And Jake Gardner has position and just held up Brandon Sod enough so that Jonathan Bernier could cover up. Well, it's a tough enough game to play with a stick, let alone without one. And that dream strike is coming along the boards, and he got a little bit of a surprise as the stanchion stole the stick right out of his hand. And it, it, it's a rough one because it's a shock to you, but also you can jam your wrist, a finger, anything. He was very fortunate. And he changed the stick. He didn't like that one. He went back, got another one. Hopefully this one's got a goal in it. Nine seconds to go with the penalty to Brian Bickle. The Blackhawks get the puck and he'll kill off the remaining seconds of this power play. In comes Patrick Sharp. Penalty's over. Pickles been released. Jonathan Taves. Carl Gunnarsson battles with him. Dianfinov gets the puck, moves it up the boards. Jay McClellan. David Cole and Kovanor, fourth line shift. Puck goes deep. Oars after it. Jonathan Taves. Out with Patrick Kane and Patrick Sharp for a shift after a penalty kill. Nick Letty straight up the middle and reaching out with his stick was Gunnarsson. He might have saved a goal by deflecting that off the glass. What did the seize part for Nick Letty? Ranger just followed his eyes and went to the outside thinking he was going to pass it. Great play by Letty. He's had a pretty good game. No ice, no He's got a crazy ice. set of wheels, guys. He can really fly. He's had a better game than Duncan tonight. A big part of their playoffs last year, too. He, he loves the puck extremely well. Gives him a solid third pair. Here's Joffrey Lupo. Raymond to the net and a deflection away from him by Johnny O'Dugan. Up the boards to center, Joffrey Lupo. Morgan Riley. Game number seven for the 19 year old defenseman. Decision time approaching. Leaves on a change. Seabrook had lots of time. He waits for his team to change. Taves reached for the puck, didn't get it. Icing call against Chicago. As a defenseman, when you're taking the rush, you, you try to look and see where the options are. Ranger knows he's got a guy on the right side, so watch as soon as the back end. He anticipates it. What a heads up play by his partner getting across and getting the stick in one. I don't think you want to give that much space to anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. You protect the middle, push everything to the outside, give your goalie the, the, the crazy angles to handle the shots, but down Main Street's not a good idea. Bozak won the draw. Kessel turns, shoots just wide of the net. And the Blackhawks break out. Marion Hosa. Jonathan Taves. Hosa drives for the net. Taves couldn't center against Dion Fadon. They had some pretty good battles tonight. Most of them did the Toronto win. Here's Kessel again. Drives wide and takes the shot on Duncan Keith, and that's deflected out of play. It's like having a tall quarterback to look over the line and throw passes. Your goaltenders nowadays are extremely tall because they got to look over the traffic and cover the net when they drop down the butterfly. But Crawford's extremely low. He's almost looking through legs and beside hips and around to see and locate that puck. And you mentioned earlier, Craig, that he's done a good job tonight of making the saves that he's had to make. He hasn't had a lot of work, and his rebound control has been very good. I wonder how much he's going to play this year. <laughs> he's off to a big start. Nikolai Habibu in the backup. He had a career high 57 back in 11. But he's on pace for 72, the way it's going now. There's a wraparound attempt. He's down and he made the save. Leafs are coming on a little bit as Jay McClement tries to get to the front of the net. Cadbury's in front of the goal. Josh Lebo there as well. Not a line juggling. I'm sure he thought he wants to play a few in February too, don't you think? Well, I think he'd love to. He got invited to Team Canada's orientation camp. That spot's wide open too. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be an interesting battle, isn't it? But it's not a it's not a bad battle the way it looked like it was going to be. There's some guys playing real well. Uh, Carey Price, we talked about him on our show a lot tonight. Crawford 
Mwongo. Bouncing puck. Patrick Sharp settled it down. Centering pass. Kessel blocked it. Up the boards. Van Riemsdyk to center. Away from the matchup now. The Bozak line playing against Michael Hanzu's second line for Chicago. You can see how Chicago really spreads out defensively. They go D to D, side to side, and they get you chasing. You got to find a way to get in and close the gap quickly and turn pucks over. It's a big ice surface for the Blackhawks. Here's Van Riemsdijk. Drop pass for Kessel. Trying to get open. He had his pocket picked by the Eric Dodger, Patrick Sharp. Back he comes with Shaw. Takes the shot. Bernie makes the save. And the Leafs move the puck up the boards and Kessel gets it up to center. That was a good read defensively by Morgan Riley there. He didn't overplay the body and get caught to the outside. He just used his speed and got back to a good, solid position. Brandon Perry lost the puck a second time. First Raymond took it from him. And David Boland got it. Now Cody Franson has it. Up the middle, Raymond with some speed. Gets in, fakes the shot, takes it. Nice save by Crawford. Rebound, Lupul threw the puck through the top of the crease. Off the boards, Boland turns, passes off. Raymond with Lupul in front of the net. Passes back, Ranger shoots and he missed the net. And this is the best stretch of hockey the Leafs have played in the game after Randy Carlisle went to the blender and he's juggled some lines. David Bolin with Raymond and Lupo. Gets the puck deep. And Seabrook is there. Lupo stays on late. And the Blackhawks take over and Duncan Keith effortlessly gets into center. Brandon Peary's pass was a bad one behind Marion Hosa. But a fell, but he got the puck across the ice. Up the middle, into the attacking zone, Nazem Kadri, great dangle, shoots, and that's off the side of the net, Crawford might have got a piece of it, and there's a penalty coming up for a hook in front of the net, and slowly getting out of the net is Nazem Kadri. Uh, some fine stick handling for Kadri made this possible, outside, inside, through Letty, and then you can see Taves with the hook, and then the high stick as well. Power play coming up for Toronto. Opportunity knocks for the Toronto Maple Leafs once again. Jonathan Taves is off. It'll be a fifth power play for Toronto. Yeah, you thought for a second there was the one hook and a missed high stick as Letty reaching in got Kadri as well. Well, one thing the Chicago Blackhawks have is the personnel on their backside to join the offense, and they've done this all night long. Gulmerson down below the goal line. Odia joining the rush to make it easier to enter the zone and give more options. And, the, and because these Blackhawk defensemen are so involved offensively, down in the offensive end, and there you see the Costco ball. I mean, it makes it so hard for the reads for the defensive team to pick them up, and it really helps your offense out. They've been great all night long. Once again, after the TV timeout, Randy Carlisle likes to go with this, what would normally be the second power play unit. Lupo, Raymond, Kadri out there with the defense of France and Fano. Leafs get the draw. Fano to Cody France. Lupo's parked in front of the net. Kadri lost the puck in his feet, and that gave the Blackhawks a chance to get to him, but they don't get it out. Dion Fano takes a shot block. Kadri tried to poke it to the front of the net, couldn't. Fano again. On the outside, France. Lupul's parked in front again. Raymond at the side of the net. Here comes Dion Fanuf. Takes a quick shot. That's blocked by Jalmerson. Lupul gets to the puck. Needs some help here from Raymond. They'll get it back to the blue line and Fanuf. On the other side is France. Walking the line. Dion Fanuf passes down low. Nazem Kadri looks towards the net. Studies his options. Mason Raymond to Kadri. Fanuf come to the front of the net. Lupul has to go to the corner after the puck. Can't go back to the point. Fanuf had abandoned it, so he keeps the puck in deep. Mason Raymond. Defender without a stick is Hansu. It's Keon Fanuf. Couldn't get the puck to the front of the goal. There's Cody Franson back to the outside again. Nazem Kadri turns to the net. With the blue line, Franson's shot blocked by Kruger. No stick for Hansu. Can't clear the puck. But he gets some help, and finally the penalty killers get a change. Well, the opportunity was there to take advantage, and Hanzus get a one-timer through a player without a stick, but his partner, Kruger, behind him, did an excellent job of getting a hold of that shot. That was a minute and a half in the attacking zone. Now Van Riemsdyk, Kessel, and Bozak at the tail end of the power play instead of the start of it. Kessel to Morgan Riley. Keith stood up on him, but he got the puck in deep. His partner Seabrook is back to get the puck and he clears it. 
That'll be one last rush for this Maple Leaf power play that is one for four so far in the game. What a good read by Seabrook. He understood Keith was going to be aggressive at the line. Leafs were standing still. They got right over to get to that first puck. James Van Riemsda, just as the penalty to Taves expires. And a big kill for Chicago in a 3-1 game. Duncan Keith to Brent Seabrook. And the Blackhawks can come out of their own zone. Toronto's changing, so Keith decides to step up, take a shot, Bernier made the save. Taves in deep. Taves, Sharp, and Kane again first shift after a penalty kill. Here's Jonathan Taves, shoots up high, missed the net. Kane, bouncing puck, and he was in deep and missed the net. It's a dangerous line, first shift after a penalty kill. And it's always Taves, Kane, and Sharp. Leafs had the puck and gave it away to them. Taves to Sharp, to Kane, stopped by Bernier, rebound. Jay McClemmon onto the puck, gets away from Kane, and moves the puck out to center ice. You see, Bernier thought he had it underneath him, and that puck was still dangerously close to Kane. Made the save, and he thought he had the rebound. Made some big saves to keep his team alive. Blackhawks think that game should be just about over now at 4-1. to They had one goal waved off, and they probably thought they should have scored there. Mason Lee up against Nicoletti. Cadry comes on. Lebo's in front. Josh Lebo missed a bouncing puck. Better period for Toronto, but they can't score from the blue line. Carl Gunnarsson shoots. Crawford the save. Mason Raymond couldn't get the puck along the boards. Brian Bickle does, and he bounces it off the boards to center. Gunnarsson to Ranger. And back to Mason Raymond with some open ice. Moves it on Seabrook. Fake the shot. Try to spin around, and Bickle would have none of that. He stapled him to the boards. Puck stays in. Crawford made the save on Puno. Levo's in deep. The Blackhawks get a hold of the puck and get it to center. Blackhawks are hanging on here. They've had a couple of chances, but a lot of this period has been spent in the attacking zone of Toronto. The puck hit a discarded stick. Those two power plays have helped a ton. Here's Jonathan Taves centering for Saad. Dion put up with a good defensive play. Brandon Saad again for Taves on the doorstep. And the Leafs collapse to the net and get the puck. Bill Kessel, a little chip and chase around to do you. Can't get by it. Jalmerson with a good professional holdout. Kessel got in and got the puck. Centering Van Reed that couldn't shoot. Bill Kessel. Centering pass got lucky. Gardner was able to keep the puck in. Oduya struggling to clear it, can't do it. Van Riemsdyk centering blindly, couldn't get the puck to the front of the net. There's Kessel again, his backhand pass, trying to find Morgan Riley, was intercepted. John of the Cage drives to the net, stopped by Bergay. Jake Gardner's back to the puck. Hawks are changing, lots of room for Gardner to escape the puck to center. His pass. Breeze right by Dave Bowling. No icing on this play. Duncan Keith is back, and he's under pressure right away from Colton Orr. Blackhawks quickly out of their own zone. Jokic Nordstrom chases the puck and chases Ranger. Just about banked it into his own net. Off Brandon Peary trying to clear it, and Bernie made the save, and I'm not sure he had any idea that he had the puck. Looked like a harmless play. Ranger trying to clear it. Hit Brandon Peary and Jonathan Bernier managed to stop it. Chicago against Toronto or the Fratellis against Miley Cyrus as we say on MTV and some adventures for Jonathan Bernier. Well it hasn't been an oil painting that's for sure and here he believes he's got the puck underneath his glove and he still believes it and eventually he realizes he does it and then as Ranger goes to clear this puck he banks it off the shin pad of Peary and almost into the net. And it's been a struggle for the Leafs all night, and a big part of it has been their end zone time. You look at the puck possession after the second period and how much time they spend in the offensive zone these two periods, it's they're barely over 12 minutes, and that's power play time inclusive. I mean, so you got to figure out, knock another three, four minutes of the two power plays they had off of there, and that's not a lot of end zone time. They've been much better in the third period, but again, those two power plays have helped to give them a bit of confidence, and they've had some extended time in the zone. Even Jim talking about the minute and a half on the power play of possession. They never got a shot on goal. Yeah. Always to the outside. Blackhawks penalty killing is well is very improved since the la over the last few games. It has struggled a bit, so it's starting to get back to where it was last year. Dave Boland to face off here against Patrick Sharp. 
missed as he tried to keep the puck in. Boland gets it out to center. Cole to Nord. Shoots the puck in deep. Morgan Riley up on an offensive rush. Joffrey Lupoli deep as well. Hansu's got a hold of the puck and got it to center. There's Patrick Kane with a little ice in on Franzen. Stops up, takes the shot, missed the net. Duncan Keith on the other side. Finds Kane. Franzen comes right at him. Boland is back. For Colton Orr, his job to get the puck out by Duncan Keith. Can't do it. Sharp. Seabrook walks in, shoots, and Bernier made the save. Colton Orr pushed the puck back towards his defense. A centering pass, short side. Patrick Sharp from Kane couldn't put it in. I almost saw Seabrook there looking for options. He didn't want to shoot yes. that. He knew he wasn't going to beat Bernier with nobody in front. Jonathan Taves up against Benoit. Finds Sharp. He goes back to the blue line as usual, and Aduya's shot is blocked. Bozak up the middle. Here's James Van Riemsdyk. One on three. Kessel's coming up late. Centering pass. Taken away by Brandon Saad to Marion Hosa. Taves heads for the net. So does Saad. The rejection there by Carl Gunnarsson. A good defensive play. Gunnarsson trying to pull away from Jonathan Taves. Kessel. Stopped and gave the puck away to Jalmerson. Leafs are running out of time. Down by two. Third period. Blackhawks have outshot the 39-17. No! No! The real opportunity this was in the first period where Chicago started the game in a nap and the Leafs couldn't jump it. At least some shots. Eight shots in this period after nine in the first two. But rarely have they had a second chance. There haven't been many rebound shots, has there? From one and done. Here's Nazem Kadri. Gardner joins the rush. Mason Raymond. Gardner shot off a stick out of play. 4-0-4 remaining in the third period. The Chicago Blackhawks with a 3 one lead over the Maple Leafs on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada. He's putting the puck in the net tonight for Chicago. It's the new guys as we have a look at our Hockey Night close-up for Subway restaurants. It always works out that way. Two guys that have some ties to the Toronto area playing against the Leafs tonight have made an effect. And of course, we saw the possible goal. That's his first National Hockey League goal. And Perry in front of the net and getting the stick on the ice and finishing it off and got the crowd going. And the crowd has been going here as they're dancing up a storm here down the last four minutes, hoping that their team can hang on to this 3-1 lead. And the way Crawford's been playing, I don't see why not. Tosca's goal is first in the NHL would be a key winner if this holds up. Adley wins the face off. With Mason Raymond and Joffrey Lupul again. Here's Joffrey Lupul to the front of the net, and Kadri hadn't arrived yet. Jake Gardner, Mason Raymond, Nazem Kadri quickly back. Rangers shoots, big rebound, and what a save by Crawford on Mason Raymond. Gave up a rebound, but made a wonderful save. After doing so, what a reaction to it. I mean, not only the rebound there, but he went for the body. Looks like Tim Thomas. Yeah, absolutely. Beat the player head on. Here's Kadri again. Hope checked to the line by Nick Chalmerson, and back come the Blackhawks. Jonathan Taves hosted to the net. Brandon Saad in too deep. Taves. Johnny O'Neill to Nick Chalmerson, and he just backhands the puck in. Good puck management now for the Blackhawks just trying to work the clock and finish this off. I wonder how long Randy Carlisle will leave the goaltender in the net. Will he try that second goal? As I mentioned, not really any second chances on Crawford. He's been neat and tidy in his own crease. This one, a good shot through a crowd. Nice passing by the Leafs. And look at the reaction. Oh, almost blockered him right there. Yeah. Chops. That's taken away time and space. And here's a look at Corey Crawford's last year and those pads. And with the formula that they put together, those pads got trimmed down considerably. You're looking at probably five inches off the top of his pads this year. And that's an adjustment when you get down in the five-hole position, making sure it's all covered up. And tonight, he's looked pretty good. Yeah, it hasn't really hurt him. He's had a pretty good start to the season. Makes another save on Bill Kessel. Van Riemsdijk to the front of the net, tipped wide by Tyler Bozak. And up to center comes Brandon Saad. Moving in on Cody Franson. Hosa takes the shot. Bernier makes another nice save. 
and he's been pretty good tonight as the Blackhawks get up to 40 shots. Now, Bernier wanted to move the puck and not have the whistle down there, but his defenseman, Franson, was screening him. He wasn't sure where traffic was, and he didn't want to throw it. Watch his reaction. He's got one hawk behind the net. He sees him. Now he's looking, trying to look underneath Cody Franson. Should I let the puck go and keep the play? It gives him a little pat on the behind. Cadre want to draw in his own in. Branson had the puck taken away by Patrick Kane and a good poke check there. Right as a Cadre to recover for his defenseman. Branson is back. Watched by Patrick Sharp. Duncan Keith, the French Seabrook working the clock. You gotta think that Bernier would be coming out now if the Leafs can get control. Look at Chicago though. They're, they're just in time kill mode. Yeah, they are. Spread you out. Side to side, don't need to make a play. Sharp to the front of the net. Nice play by Dion for the to break it up. Now the Leafs have the puck, and Bernier will be looking towards the bench. Mason Raymond. Chop free Lupo. Bernier's on the bench for the extra attacker as Lupo gets the puck deep. Hadry follows it. Mason Raymond is there as well. They folded the extra player off the bench. Hole into the boards. Lupo pokes the puck back to Dion for them. All he can do is keep it in. Duncan Keith with an aerial to center. That's knocked out of the air by a high stick stopping play. With a minute 28 seconds to go in the third period of the goaltender out. Let's bring in Ron McLean. Looking today, Thomas Hurdle's up to 918,000 hits on YouTube <laughs> for his four goals. Unbelievable. Goaltender had to come back in here as the play gets into the Toronto zone. Well, that's a big ice in there, too. You, you think about the Leafs trying to create a plan. Now Chicago saves them a timeout, yep. allows them to get Bernier there. And this faceoff so important, the Leafs have got themselves up to 46% in this period. Blackhawks get the puck. Dave's got it to center, Morgan Riley. Ian Gardner, interesting choices for Randy Carlisle to be on the ice with the extra attacker. Two guys that can skate, carry a lot of ice time quick. Here's Van Riemsdyk, into the attacking zone, advances the puck, Bozak goes in after it. But Julia stepped in front of him. One 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 and the puck comes to the line, one. just out of the reach of Morgan Riley. Got to the puck before Marion Hosa. Shot back in by Van Riemsdyk. First man back, Oduya. Hard off the boards. Gardner stopped the puck for a second, couldn't control it. Here's Brandon Saad with an open net, and that went off the stick of Riley and just wide. Marion Hosa. Brandon Saad off the boards. Now he's got to chase the puck, and the Leafs get it to center. And down goes Tyler Bozak, and no arm goes up. Now to 30 seconds to go, third period, and in all likelihood, the game now. The net empty, Siebert took a shot at it, that goes wide, and there's another icing call, and not as big a deal because it's a two-goal Chicago lead. Well, you wonder about the non-call here. Here's why. Watch Bozak grab his stick and try to get a penalty. That, that's a good non-call. Both guys battling for the puck. Bozak trying to get a late power play for his team. 50-50 pucks. I mean, off that face-off you were talking about, I mean, Bozak doesn't win the draw, correct? But he actually scatters it but they don't win the 50-50 puck battle, and they've lost a few of those tonight when they really needed them to keep that puck in the end zone. Randy Carlisle at the end of this will bemoan the fact that his team didn't start on time. Started playing in the third period, and they're already down 3-1. And when you think about the start of the second, there was still an opportunity. The game yeah. was in play, the building was quiet, but it was the Hawks that got that early push. Well, that Brandon Peary, late second period power play goal is huge, isn't it? Make this a 3-1 game. And how about the Hawks? They don't get an empty netter here. This will be the seventh game without a third period goal. Hard to believe with this talent that you're not even going to get a lucky one. They certainly killed the penalties when they had to. Those two power plays for Toronto was opportunity, especially the disallowed goal and then coming the other way. If yeah. the Leafs get one there, you know, that just sways it so much. And Chicago's penalty killing stood up for them today. Kadri and Taves in the face-off circle here. Jonathan Taves wants the draw. Duncan Keith up the boards. Brandon Sutton hits the puck to center. Cody Franzen to Joffrey Lupo. 
Offside. And the play is stopped offside. As soon as this is over, there's 15 seconds left here in a 3-1 Chicago lead. We'll take you to Montreal. You'll see the end of the Nashville-Montreal game. It's still to come tonight. San Jose against Ottawa. And the late game in our doubleheader. Calgary. San Jose, Calgary. Ottawa last week. <laughs> yes, San Jose, Calgary. Sorry about that. Calgary. Oh. Calgary 3-1 and 2. San Jose 6-0 oh, and 1. And the Chicago Blackhawks are 5-1 and 2. They've defeated the Toronto Maple Leafs 3-1. There's a second to go on the clock, but a puck drop will end the game. 40 shots tonight for the Chicago Blackhawks, and that's a little over the average that the leagues normally get per game. They had around 35 against, so it's nothing new for the goaltending, but it's not enough for it. Not enough quality scoring chances for for the Maple Leafs. It's going to be a two-game losing streak, you can call it that, for Toronto, and heading home to play a good team from Anaheim on Tuesday. Chicago heads to Florida. In the sixth straight game, the Leafs have been outshot in. Drop it. Sounds. It's been 10 years since Toronto defeated Chicago. That streak continues. Eight straight losses for Toronto to the Blackhawks. No triumphant return for Dave Bolin tonight. Mike Costco with his first NHL goal is a game winner. Brandon Peary got his second NHL goal as insurance for Jonathan Tate, Corey Crawford, and the Chicago Blackhawks in a 3-1 win over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now let's take you to Montreal and Bob Cole and Greg Millen.